We begin tonight with the latest on the capture of Singapore's most wanted man, Masalamat Kastari, in Malaysia. Now, here is what we do know. Malaysian special branch officers arrested Masalamat near Skudai. Now, that is about 25 kilometers from Johor Bahru. Earlier, Deputy Prime Minister Wong Kan Seng revealed that Mas Salamat had swum across the Straits of Johor to Johor Bahru using what is described as an improvised flotation device. And as you know, the Singapore JI leader made his getaway in February last year. He climbed out of a toilet window at Whitley Road Detention Centre, and the governments of Singapore and Malaysia confirmed that he was arrested on April the 1st this year. Mr. Wong says news of his capture was not made public earlier so as not to compromise operations or jeopardize sources of information. Mas Lamad's escape from the Whitley Road Detention Centre was a setback and a painful lesson for the country, says Mr. Wong. But the Internal Security Department's officers persevered. They did not give up and uh, they continued to work their leads and they look at every lead possible that is provided. And for this particular one, they developed this lead on their own. And uh, eventually, they shared that lead, which they think is the most credible one, with the Malaysians. And the Malaysians uh, worked hard on that and eventually found where Maslamat was and arrested him. Mr. Wong says Singapore's happy that Maslamat has been arrested and the Malaysian special branch had done excellent work. Between ISD and MSB, uh, there's a long-standing cooperative, cordial relationship and as a result of this kind of relationship, uh, we were able to keep each of our countries safe and also contributing to the safety and security of the region. Singapore is a small country. It has a long coastline. It is porous and uh, it's easy for people and for goods to be brought in and, or even to leave Singapore. So we must not assume that just by the arrest of one person, Singapore will be safe from terrorist threat. No. Mr Wong said that Mas Lamad will remain in Malaysia for now, as the Malaysians want to continue interviewing him. When asked why the public could not be informed earlier, Mr Wong explained the need for operational secrecy. He added that Malaysia wanted to investigate what other terrorist networks were up to. And when Mas Lamar is brought back to Singapore, he'll be sent once again to the Whitley Road Detention Centre, which, Mr Wong says, is now a different place, with many more security measures put in place. Malaysia, meantime, says the Singaporean experience will hopefully help its authorities to ensure Mas Salamat stays in custody. The Home Minister confirmed today that the J.I. suspect is being held under Malaysia's tough internal security law but he refused to reveal where Mas Salamat is now or any details of his arrest. Malaysia does say that it worked with Singapore and Indonesia on the capture. The arrest of Mas Salamat reportedly over a month ago was kept under close wrap by the Malaysian authorities. Speaking at his office in Putrajaya, Home Minister Hishamuddin Hussein explained why. You have to understand there are certain things that are of national interest. Anything that is revealed may affect the investigations, uh, not only done by the Malaysian uh, uh, um, intelligence, but also will, it, will affect our relationship and cooperation with the other two countries in this particular case. I understand um, that there's a time and need where we need to have openness, uh, but you all have to also understand that there is a time and need for us to uh, ensure that sensitive information do not go out because it may affect further investigation which may involve people other than the individual that we are discussing today. Both the Home Minister and the Police Chief, Musa Hassan, refused to disclose where and how the elusive terror suspect was captured. Mas Lamad had escaped detention three times and is equally wanted by the Malaysian authorities. He was planning uh, uh, um, something which uh, uh, allows us to uh, arrest him. I mean, was he planning to create <laughs> unrest? Like, uh, plan I can't go into the details. This is too uh, sensitive. Now, sources told Channel News Asia that the arrest of three J.I. suspects by the Malaysian police in early March could have led to the capture of Mas Salamat. Now, one of the suspects, Agus Salim, was said to be running a restaurant outside Johor Bahru, near where Mas Salamat was picked up. Now, Agus is wanted by the Indonesian authority for suspected involvement in bank robberies. 
The Malaysian police intelligence are now holding Masa Lamad for investigations. They added that his arrest wouldn't have been possible without the cooperation of Singapore and Indonesian counterparts. Now, while Kuala Lumpur appears to be in no hurry to turn Maslamat over to Singapore, Minister Hishamuddin denied that the story was leaked in order to put pressures on Malaysian authorities to do so. Now, if there were, he said Malaysia will stop cooperating with its southern neighbour. Melissa Go, Channel News Asia, Kuala Lumpur. Terrorism experts we spoke to believe Maslamat managed to escape from Singapore with the help of Jamaa Islamia operatives in Malaysia. They also say that while he is now back in custody, it is critical to find out what he was doing and who he had contact with while on the run to prevent possible terrorist operations in the near future. This has become one of the most infamous faces in Singapore and the region. And while Singaporeans can finally come to rest with his capture, experts say they must continue to be vigilant. Marcel Ahmad is uh, a terrorist with a very high degree of experience and a man uh, with tremendous determination. And there are very few terrorists of that competence and capability. And uh, it demonstrates that Singapore and the region faces a continuous threat. It demonstrates the need for every Singaporean and every, any person living in this country to be vigilant. JI is a group that is constantly growing. JI is a group that is constantly active. And he has been able to link up with a number of JI members. Experts believe that fortunately, Masalamat was not able to execute his dangerous operations while in hiding. The, the Malaysians would have invoked the ISA only if it was close to the uh, execution stage. So there's, the enough, there's enough evidence for the arrest of uh, Masalamat. So it's very important for these agencies to find out who Masalamat has been in contact with, uh, whether or not these are people who are already known whether there are any new individuals who are so-called clean skins that have never had any sort of record before but are now radicalized and are, are forming either support operational cells. Uh, they would want to know what are the, the, the plans that were, were, were being laid for operations, uh, whether uh, in Singapore or well, anywhere else in this region. Dr. Rohan believes that Malaysians have discovered vital information which could lead to more arrests, although getting more out of Masalamat won't be easy. In terms of breaking Masalamat Kastari, it will require uh, a very significant uh, period of time because he's a very hardened terrorist. Experts warn that the Juma Islamiyah group still poses a profound threat, so authorities need to continue to keep a close watch on them. In addition, experts said that governments need to work more closely with schools and religious institutions to educate the public that JI is a deviant group and that the community should come together to fight against extremism. Now here's a recap of what Mas Salamat is alleged to have done. The 48-year-old is believed to have been involved with militant group Jamaa Islamia since the 1990s. In 1999, he took over as head of the Singapore cell. He planned attacks on various sites here, including the U.S. Embassy. Analysts call Mas Salamat a key icon of J.I. The group is blamed for a string of deadly attacks in Southeast Asia, including the Bali bombings in 2002 and 2005. Mas Salamat is also thought to have close ties with senior J.I. leaders such as Nordin Muhammad Top.